major news that we are about to receive within 24 hours. And that's that the nation is in a recession. Now, the administration is going to try and spin it. However, the administration will try to. And that in and of itself should frighten every single one of us. Because whether they're trying to tell us that a man is a woman and therefore can compete against female athletes or whether it's appropriate for a pregnant man emoji to exist on Apple because, hey, you know, men apparently get to have babies too. Whether they're trying to tell you that or whether they're trying to tell you we're not in a recession because recession is something else entirely. Listen, we know what's what and it's important, I think, that everyone stay grounded in some kind of sense of responsibility to the truth. Hello, welcome to the program. Good to have you here as always. Do me this favor, make sure that you are subscribed. It's really, really important. Make sure you're subscribed to the audio version on Apple iTunes, on Spotify, wherever you're listening. Portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There's never been a better time to invest in precious metals than right now in the here and now. So go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for more. Again, that's LegacyPMInvestments.com. All right, on yesterday's program, if you were listening, if you were watching on YouTube or Rumble, on Facebook even, I told you that the classic definition of a recession is two quarters of negative growth, negative GDP growth. And I promised you that I would verify this with an actual textbook definition. (laughs) So I went to what happens to be the most widely used textbook, or at least one of the most widely used textbooks in colleges, which just happens to be written by my uncle, (laughs) great economist, William McEachern. Anyway, my uncle, as many economists would tell you, is that yes, the classic definition of a recession is two quarters of negative growth. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna quote from his textbook here, again, used in many colleges across the country, in which he writes, a mild contraction in the economy is called a recession, which is a decline in total production, lasting at least two consecutive quarters or at least six months. Can we get that straight, everyone? It's two consecutive quarters of GDP decline. That is the classic definition of recession, no matter what Biden and Yellen and even Jerome Powell, should he dare to go there, try to tell you. I hope he doesn't, by the way, for goodness sakes. Let's try to keep the Fed as unpolitical as we possibly can. But these people actually want to try and convince you of something else entirely. Now, look, I get it. I get that politicians need to spin, spin, spin. And you know what? I'm not adverse to trying to put a positive wrapper on all of it, right? A nice big shiny bow. In fact, my criticism of Obama over and over and over again was like, my gosh, this guy was such a darn pessimist. He made us feel bad about everything because of course he wanted more government to help fix everything. And in doing so, created this kind of malaise or or sort of a depression, frankly, among the sentiment of the American consumer that I think was quite harmful. In other words, why buy something today when you can get it just as cheap tomorrow? And by the way, the government is always gonna be there to lend its own little helping hand in ways that would prevent markets from ever failing. I mean, that's a whole other thing. But anyway, let's go back to the, let's go back to what's real for just one second. Janet Yellen and President Biden are trying to get you to believe that, no, no, you gotta wait until the you know, National Bureau of Economic Research, the NBER comes out and defines what recession is. I'm sorry, guys. You know what? I'm going to go by, again, the classic definition, the textbook definition. It's right here in the Economics 101 book. Two quarters of negative GDP growth, two quarters, consecutive quarters of a decline in total production is a recession. Now, goodness, I, I certainly hope it's not a depression. We haven't had many of those, right? You got to go back to the 1930s. I mean, it would be pretty horrible, albeit somewhat remarkable if if Biden were to bring that on. I hope that it's going to be just a recession and I'm hopeful that we can recover from it. But look, you just had policy failure after policy failure after policy failure. I mean, you can't even make it up. I mean, 
it, it was so obvious, frankly, to anybody who had a couple of brain cells, and yet these idiots, both at the Fed and in the White House, chose to ignore it. Why? I mean, I would just argue that for political reasons, they ought to be more sensible. They should be more sensible because they ought to know that inflation is going to come back and bite them politically in ways that makes it simply not feasible for them to continue in office. A quick shout out, I have more to say on this in just a moment, especially looking at new poll numbers and the fact that Trump is now descending on Washington, D.C. and Mike Pence is out there potentially as his rival. But before we get to that, a quick note about my friends over at AMAC because these are folks that are working so hard, so aggressively to fight all this inflation so that you and I and our families do not have to experience it for decades to come. I mean, heck, you look at the, the, the debt to... GDP numbers and it's not pleasant looking and and yeah I mean it's bad in the US it's bad everywhere which tells me the developed world is in for some trouble certainly in the emerging market world too by the way and I say that as somebody who used to be trading emerging market debt and listen if it's not going well in the markets that are developed it's certainly not going well in emerging markets but Let's just focus in on this inflation for a moment that my friends over at AMAC, they're, they're trying very hard. This is the Association for Mature American Citizens, amac.us slash Regan, R-E-G-A-N. That's my last name, Regan, R-E-G-A-N. So amac.us slash Regan, and, and they're working prevent inflation. I mean, look, <laughs> it's a mess. It's a total mess because the Federal Reserve is all screwed up. But you combine that with a White House and a willingness from Congress to just spend, spend, spend. I mean, the heck, the answer to inflation for these guys is let's give out more money. Let's help everybody with gas prices by just giving out more and more checks. I mean, none of it makes any sense. And I, I just think that there's a problem in Washington, D.C. with this because they just want to buy their votes. So AMAC is working very hard every day to prevent that. Go to amac.us slash Regan sign up and by the way let me just say it's so worth it your money is going to be pooled with everyone else's that cares about exactly the same things that you and i do 2.4 million americans so 16 bucks a year you make it back in in literally days because you get so many discounts on travel and restaurants and all that good stuff cell phone plans you name it go to amac.us slash regan sign up today join forces with this wonderful group of people that care about America like you and I do. All right, let's get back to all the things that are happening. I mean, it, it's, as I said, it's like, you know, in yesterday's show, I actually called it train wreck because you can just see it happening. And, and the saddest thing of all is, frankly, it was also preventable. Donald Trump was in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday to speak about at the American first policy institute about the need for putting policy issues like safety first. I mean, this isn't that hard, right? Like it's not that hard to say, you know what? We need to care about American safety. We need to make sure that we don't have drug dealers on the street or coming into the country. We need to make sure that we police our neighborhoods, all of our neighborhoods. That means, you know, that the South side of Chicago and Compton out in California and parts of New York City and, and Brooklyn and the Bronx and all these places where the police have backed off. I mean, they're not allowed to do their jobs. That's part of the issue here. And so what Trump is saying is perfectly normal and logical. And the idea that the Democrats are somehow fighting this, that's a huge problem. They're fighting everything. They're fighting the idea that only a woman can have a baby. That's how weird it's gotten. Only a woman can have a baby. Let me, let me just say that for the record, okay? Like we can go back to, to science class and biology from whatever, whenever it's fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, only a woman can have a baby. And you know what? That's, that's not a sexist, prejudiced, biased thing to say. Just like a recession is defined as two quarters of negative growth and that's not a biased thing to say. Yet the algorithms on all these social media companies, I'm sure will be furious that I dared to say it. In fact, actually, they've actually gone after me repeatedly in the past because I have dared to call out the economic policy, which I said would lead us straight into recession. Heck, when you can't even talk about these topics, what have we become? Think about that. What have we become as a society? 
when I can't say, look, we're facing recession, and when the administration is trying to tell us, it's really not that. No, 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 not that. And you know, hey, maybe a man can have a baby. I mean, come on, guys. All right, enough is enough. And so when Trump gets up there and he just speaks simply about obvious things, you know what? That resonates with people. I think he's going to face other challenges because we have independence in this country that he may have worn his welcome out with, right? That's a whole other issue, whether or not he can bring enough people into the middle. Heck, that's why Biden won. Nobody was voting on policy. All these people were like, oh, we don't care about policy. We don't care about the economy. We don't care about Afghanistan or the border or anything. People were like, I'm just sick of this. That's why he was able to, Biden was able to bring so many people in the middle over. But ultimately, it's the common sense issues that resonate most with Americans. And this administration has no common sense, none whatsoever. Look, here's the reality, guys. The Fed is raising rates because we have inflation. Inflation that I promised you was going to happen. You can't just leave rates at historic lows for so long and print so much money and think that nobody's going to care, that you're never going to get inflation. I get it. They weren't able to do it during Obama. Low rates and even during the Trump administration. But at some point, you know, push comes to shove. You got people that aren't spending any money because, well, they can't spend any money thanks to March 2020 and everything that ensued. And as a result, there was pent up demand and there's still pent up demand. Heck, I mean, people are still willing to spend. And so all this inflation is a very tricky item. Walmart's concerned about it. You have numerous companies. Oh, all the tech companies have expressed concerns about this. And I think you're going to see it reflected certainly in a a number of companies' earnings. I get it. You know, people are not going to be spending the way that they were in the past. The question, though, is are they going to spend enough to keep this economy going? Consumer spending, two-thirds of GDP, an important statistic to remember <laughs> as they try and tell us to, to believe that the sky is blue when, in fact, we know it's gray. All right, recession is most likely here. And again, we'll see the final numbers on Thursday. Well, actually, you won't see the final numbers on Thursday. You'll see temporary numbers that they will try and fix along the way. But I do suspect, ultimately, what we will learn is that we have been experiencing two consecutive quarters of decline. The textbook definition of a recession. I want to quickly remind you to make sure that you have subscribed to this podcast on Apple, on Spotify. Hey, do me this favor. Just do it everywhere. Okay. That way we've got all our bases covered. It's really important because it matters that we're able to talk directly. And I will see you on my website, trishintel.com. I will see you over on Locals. Great platform there. My friends over at Locals, trishregan.locals.com. And of course, I'll see you right back here tomorrow.